Welcome to The Social Stack, your YouTube channel for real estate marketing based in technology. I'm Amy Stack, and today we'll be going over some of your business basics and how to set up your branding suites, including email signatures and uh, cover images for social media. Uh, we'll probably have some time to go over some other things as well, so stick around to see uh, what you guys want to learn about. All right, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I am going to show you how to do this in command, just because there are some templates there are ready for you. So if you guys are with Keller Williams, you can access these free templates that are already professionally created by a design team in Austin for you. So I've just logged in, I'm on my dashboard. And on the left hand side, there's a paintbrush icon near the bottom of that icon list called designs. So we're just going to open up designs. And these are all things I've already worked on. So if you've never been in here, this page will be blank. That's okay. All we need to do is go up to the top right and hit create designs. I'm going to start with that email signature, which will be under social. So you can kind of interchange social and digital in your mind. So anything that might be a digital design will be in that social button. So we'll go ahead and click that and then hit continue. And we're going to have a whole bunch of templates that populate. So the left hand side are all the different categories we can look at. Today we're going to focus on business basics. So if I click on business basics, I now have email signatures and social branding. Go oh, figure, they're in the same spot and we're doing it in the same class. <laughs> I'll go ahead and click email signatures and you'll see there's a couple in here to choose from. I do want to point out under that we have social branding. So if you want to see what the different options are, because maybe you want to make sure that they look similar, you can go into social branding as well and see the different templates for the different cover photos. I want to point out that at the top of the these icons here, we have Twitter covers, LinkedIn covers, and Facebook covers. So these are all kind of mixed together right now. It's okay if you're not on all those platforms, but you need to know which one you are making the cover for because they are formatted differently. So let's say we're looking specifically at Facebook covers. I'll go ahead and tap Facebook covers. And now you can see all those images. And there's less of them there because these are the ones that are formatted specifically for Facebook. So I have a few more options under covers than I do under that email signature option. Um, and under the email signatures, if you recall, one was basically a white background with some red details and the other was a mostly red background with some gray and white details on it. So I do recommend trying to stick with the same theme. That way, when you're sending emails and sending people to your social media or maybe making a cover letter uh, or doing other things on online, anything like that, print documentation, uh, that all of your branding looks similar so that it's easy for the clients to recognize that it's the same person's information that they're looking at every time, which will help you with Mindshare as well. So does anybody have a preference if they want to look at red or white today? I don't care either way. Cherie's laughing at me. I think white's cleaner. <laughs> white's cleaner. All right. So we'll go with white. So I want to start with the email signature because I think that if you're only doing one thing, that's the place you should start. So um, we do have a few options here that have that white background or that white feel in it. So let me go to email signatures first. And this is easy to choose from. There's one with a white background, one with red. So we're going to click on white, go ahead and hit use, and that's going to open up the editor for us. What's nice is that all of this is laid out already. So you literally just have to click on the element you want to update and you can go ahead and I can double click here to highlight everything or one of my favorite tools in uh, designs here is when I click on text up at the top I've got this little kind of bar horizontal bar if you hover over it it'll say typewriter I really like to use that typewriter tool I think it's easier to edit that way and I'm just going to type right in there and hit save changes and now it's applied to my design in Illinois, your license number is not required on your marketing. You can absolutely put that in there. You could change realtor to a different title. Um, so just make sure you're checking with your managing brokers for compliance purposes. But again, you just click on these and then you can either highlight or click and hit that typewriter button and you can update your information there. Obviously that's not a real license number. I wanted to show you this because you can see it kind of went onto two lines here. If I drag that box over, now it's going to pop it all above that red line for you. So anytime you click on a box, 
you'll have these dots and bars, the dots in the corners and the bars on the side that you can kind of resize with. So that's how you can resize your text boxes. And then your logo will go on the right hand side here. Now I have already preloaded my logos into my command profile. So if you haven't done that, make sure you check out my video on how to do uh, customize your assets. So mine is in here already. All I have to do is hit this replace logo button and it pops it right in the same place for me. If you don't have your logo saved in there already, you can go to images, hit add, and you can upload an image right here. So I have the same thing I want to do with my headshot. I'm going to click on the headshot. That's obviously not me. She's got really cute hair. Great smile. No. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go back to my assets because I do also have my headshot loaded in here. So if I hover over my headshot again, if I just click on it, you guys, it's just going to drop it. Oh, I already had it selected. Sorry, let me hit undo. If I am just on the email signature and I click my headshot, it's just going to drop it in to, oh, it doesn't work for my assets. Let me go back to here. Okay. So if you have uploaded an image and you just click on it, it's just going to drop it in the middle of the email signature or whatever design you're working on. Whereas I'm going to delete that one. When I go into my assets, when I select the image that I want to replace, if I hover over, you can see we've got a plus sign, a little circular arrow, and then a grid. If I hit that circular arrow, it's going to replace the image and keep it in the same dimensions and the same spot. So you don't have to deal with resizing and moving it. So that's a, a really nice feature to have access to. And then I'm just going to show you what this does. If I hit use as background, it's going to make the whole background my face, which we don't want. So I'm going to hit undo. We want to keep with that white. And that one, I don't know, it looks a little funky today. There we go. All right, perfect. So I swapped my photo out. And then for these text boxes, you just click and update your content information, your contact information. I'm not going to type all of that in. I think you guys understand how to type in a phone number and an address at this point. I have faith in you. Um, I do want to let you know that there's this download my KW app button. So I'm going to open a new tab because I want to show you where you can find that. I get questions about that a lot. Where do I find my link to my app? I've just opened a new command tab. The last icon on the left is consumer. So I can go ahead and tap on consumer. And at the top right, there's a button that says site and app settings. So I'm gonna click on that. And at the top of this white square, there's an option here that says URLs. So we're gonna click on URL and you'll be able to find your website domain name and your app link. So yours, instead of saying download is gonna have like KW and some, maybe some other letters and definitely some numbers. Uh, so you will just copy that link. You can either hit this copy button here or I can highlight it, right click, copy. And you're going to come back to your design. And like I said, I like using that typewriter. So I'm going to open up the typewriter. I'm just going to paste that in there. And I just use the keyboard shortcut for that. And when you are doing your email signature, I recommend just getting rid of that HTTPS um, and then hit save. So as I mentioned, your link will be a little different because you are licensed agents and I am not. So just make sure you're copying the whole link from this spot right here, you do not need the HTTPS or the www if you don't want to put that in there. But that's where you find that information for your app download link. That's a so, question. Yeah, go ahead. When would you, what, how does command use this email signature? Like obviously on emails, like does it, is there a place in like smart plans where it auto populates or how does yeah, so designs use it? This is, this is going to be the email signature that you'll upload into your email. So if you're using the KW email, it's a Gmail platform, and you'll just upload this to use from your email service. This is not something that's used inside command. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thanks. Yep. So let's say we've got all our content in here. I'm ready to go to get it out so that I can put it in my email, like my Gmail account. All I have to do is hit download at the top right there. And you can choose JPEG or PNG. PNG is going to be a little higher quality. And then just hit download. And you'll see that it'll come into my download folder right here. And then you can save it wherever you would like onto your computer. Um, if you want to save it in your Google Drive, you can save it there. So you always have access to it. 
So that is making the email signature. Now I have had people ask me about like, let's say we looked at those cover photos. And we're like, okay, I like the cover photos on there, but I do really like this line with the house, right? I'm just gonna hit undo so I don't mess up that line. And that element wasn't on your social media graphic options. So there's a few things we can do. I'm gonna hit save on here. Well done and then save. And I actually pulled one up already. I'm going to reopen. And you can see this is that same email signature. And I just took everything out on the bottom. So I'm going to actually take this logo out as well, because I know that the logo is already on the cover photo design. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm just going to leave the line with my name in there. I can go ahead and download this right now. We can do JPEG or PNG. So now I have that whole thing saved as an image. And I'm going to go back to designs. And we're going to hit create. And we'll do social again. Remember, that's interchangeable with digital. And I'm going to go to that business basics. And then we're going to look at the social covers, the social branding here. And I had mentioned we we're going to use Facebook. So I'll just click on Facebook. And this gets us to the right formatting. And then we can choose one of these ones with the white background. So we could do this guy over here. If you This would still work with the white, I think. But I think that this one that says welcome home will show really nice with that bar across the top. So I'm going to go ahead and hit use. And see how I knew that that had the spot there for the logo. That's why I deleted the logo off of the email signature I was playing with. So I'm going to replace that. And I mentioned that you can upload images. So if I come to image and hit add, I can drag and drop that image I just downloaded. And it's uploading right here. So now when I click it, it pops into place. It'll take a second to buffer here. And I'm just going to drag it into the top corner and stretch it out a little bit so it lines up with the same size of the template. If you don't want it the whole length, you don't have to. You know, you can have it something like that, however you want it to look. It's your design. So I'm going to drag it to the whole length. And then you can see that the white is kind of covering up some of that imagery underneath. If I'm selected on that image that I just uploaded, up in the top right, we have some fun buttons that let us rearrange and duplicate. If I hit that Arrange button, there's an option to send to bottom. So I can tap on that. And now the image I just added is at the bottom layer of all of these design elements. So if I want to move all of them, I can just select them. I'm just holding Shift and clicking on the different images here. And then maybe I want to move them down a little bit so they're not overlapping that red line quite as much. I can also spin them. Oops. Just hit that undo button. Here's the sun. Maybe I want the sun to be on a cute little angle. I can move it around like that. So you can really play around with however you want that to look. And you could have your contact information in here, whatever you want. But now you've got that same bar there that kind of matches everything. And if you don't like it at all and you just want the welcome home, you can just delete that and you wouldn't have to move these in the first place, but then you can just have something like this as well. So there's a lot you can do. You don't have to, though. I like to point that out. A lot of people say they want to customize it and they want to do this and do that. I'm like, well, do you, do you really want to spend the time doing all that or you just want to use one of the templates that's ready to go? So you can do either. I just like to give people the option to show you that these are all separate things. So you could change these uh, different, whoops, I didn't mean to double click that. You could you know, delete an image, like I showed, you could move this one. You can resize them if you think it's too big. Maybe you want the sun over your little house, right? So you can play around if you want to. My biggest tip for you is to do not get lost in the design. There are lots of other things you can be working on. Spend your time doing things like lead gen <laughs> that's going to actually build your business. But I like to show everybody the different little features that you can do in here. So again, with your cover photo, all you have to do is hit download and then you can download it and upload it to whatever platform you chose to work with. Um, I'm going to point out one other thing up here. This is the name of your design. Oops, 
is 24. There we go. So you can call it whatever you want to easily be able to identify that later. And then I'm just going to hit done. And now you'll see that this is my design screen. So here's the one we just worked on. Here's that blank one with just the bar in the house. And then here's that email signature. So I click it and it just opens automatically. So I can come in and make any updates that I need to again. So I could call sample email sig. And then is that right? Today's the 24th? Yes. All right. So we'll just hit done. So that was the signature and the Facebook covers and where you can get them. And I see something came in the chat and Cherie said, can we use, wait, say it again. Can we use our text signature? What do you mean about that? Say more. <laughs> so you know how when you're texting on your phone? Can oh, we on your phone. Okay. Yeah, you could say this. That's a great question. You could absolutely say this as an image to your phone. You could email it to yourself. Um, and then save it in your camera roll. You could save it under favorites if you want to. Um, and you can put it into your text messages. Uh, depending on your phone, sometimes your phones will allow you to add images to your email signatures as well. So when you send from your phone, it'll have it in there. So it just depends on uh, your device. But yes, you can absolutely save this. If you're doing that, I would recommend doing the PNG just because that's going to be a higher quality image. So download that PNG, email it to yourself, and then you can do what you want with it on your phone, whether it's saving it into a text template or an email template, something like that. Great question. All right, so one of the questions that I get a lot about branding is what about, uh, like I wanna send a letter or I wanna, you know, maybe not an actual like handwritten letter, but I wanna send something on professional paper that's branded that has, you know, my information on it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done on this email signature. So far we've been in designs under the social stuff. Uh, I'm gonna click on print this time because there is a template in there for letterhead. So we'll go ahead and hit create designs. I'm gonna choose print, continue. And we're still gonna go to business basics on the left-hand side. And then we'll choose letterhead. So there's business cards in here too, but let's look at letterheads. So there's only one in there because it's pretty straightforward, right? So if I want to go ahead and click that, I can hit use. And it's got the generic KW logo in there, but I do recommend putting your uh, brokerage logo in there if you want to, or your team logo. But you can see it's got, if I zoom in here, scroll down, we've got the spot to put name, address, city, zip, et cetera. But this is just a nice little touch to give you that extra element to make you look more like a business professional than just mailing a piece of paper or handing somebody a plain piece of paper. So I wanted you to be aware that that letterhead is in there. We'll go ahead and hit done. And we'll go back into print and I'll open up those business cards so you can see those templates as well. Is there any place that we can upload our information like our bio information and then it will auto populate into some of these templates uh, so it nothing will auto populate but it, you'll have that replace option and that's that asset section i was talking about just like my headshot and my logos were in there if you go into your assets you can pre assign pre-program that information into command so it's readily available for you i was mostly talking about like name phone number that kind of stuff yep all of that you can do all of that inside assets Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Thanks. It'll still say on the template like this, it'll still say first and last. Um, let me show you, let me open one that looks, I don't know, I guess a lot of them are similar with that white background here. Here's that white background or here's one with that little red bar at the bottom. Let's go ahead and hit this one. And let's say we want it to match with that red bar. First of all, you can click on any of the elements and at the top here, you'll have your options for colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that red. Oops, I didn't hit save. My mistake. Okay, or apply. So we're gonna hit the red and then, oh, it's not cooperating. It says it's red. Hmm. See if this one works. Usually when you click on it, it just updates there. That's what should be happening. Maybe I broke it today. But what uh, 
what you guys were just asking about was for here, we've got first name, last name. Here we've got phone number, office phone number. These are things you're typing in all the time, right? So maybe you don't want to have to manually type it out every single time. When you upload your stuff into that asset section, they'll populate, that information will populate in different spots. So for example, if you upload certain elements, there's this element section, maybe you have specific, you know, triangles or swooshes or something that you use in your branding, you can then click on elements and they'll pop up in here. We've got the text information. And again, they'll, it'll have this my asset section. So these are things that I use a lot. And let's see, here's my email. So here's the KW email. And then I can go ahead and hit my replace button. And now my email's in there. But it doesn't match the branding, but at least I don't have to read. Oh, you know what? I must not have clicked the box. Let's try that again. There we go. So it matched all the fonts and everything. I was like, this shouldn't have popped in so big. So I put all that information right in there. I didn't have to type it out. I don't know if I have a phone. Okay, that's super slick. So how did you get, because it's not an image and it's like typed information, how are you getting that into my assets? Can you show us that? Um, so I have a few videos on that already, and I'm running out of time, but basically okay. I'll show you where it is, because there's a lot you can put in there, but I'll show you where it is one more uh, real real quick so you can see all of that. Um, but it, you just upload everything or type it in just like you would to a specific design, but in that My Asset section. So I'll show you where that is. Um, let me save this. And basically... All you have to do is when you're in designs here, you're going to go ahead and hit create design. It doesn't matter which one you choose. And once you're in there, all the way at the top, you're going to see templates, images, my designs, and assets. So you just click that asset section and you'll see on the left hand side, it asks for all these different types of things that you can preload into the system. So you can pick your own colors, you can upload your images your text, logos, there's the elements I was talking about, I don't have any in there, any videos you wanna upload, and then any special files you wanna have available. So you can just come in here and add all that information as you want. This is for That's custom so Thank you for showing us. Yeah, of course. So just play around with that and you'll start to see in, um, when you're in a design, let's just click on buyer. When you are in, oh, maybe we want this one. When you're in one of those designs, no matter what section you are using, images, text, logos, et cetera, you'll start to see that there's this My Asset section in there. So here I click text and it's prompting me to add new text, but I see that I have my assets. So here's all my preloaded text. Same thing with logos. There's a workspace. So th these are all the KW logos, but you guys probably want your own team logo, your personal logo, your market center logo. So you wanna load those into the My Asset section. Same thing with all your images. So I can add, I can look at the workspace and see all the KW ones. So there's lots of neighborhood photos in here. Maybe I wanna use this one instead. Swap that out. So there's lots of stuff in there, but that My asset section is where you'll find the ones that you pre-populate and are custom to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit done on that one. Do you guys have any questions about anything we looked at today in the email signatures, the, just the general branding stuff? I kind of went over some basic design tips on how to use the platform. Nothing here, okay. So what I, the last step I wanna show you is when you are in Gmail, you want to, once you have that email signature, you want to put that email signature in your Google Drive. So I'm in my email, I'm gonna hit Drive, and here is that email signature I created. There it is right there, well, it's part of it. Okay, so I put it in my Google Drive. Then when you go to your email and you hit settings, you can hit select or see all settings. And this is where you can go upload that signature to your Gmail account, your KW account is Gmail. So you scroll down on that settings section until you see signature. And if you don't have one in there, it'll be blank. So you'll just hit create new and name it whatever you want. We'll hit create. And it's giving me a blank template here. 
So there's this image button that kind of looks like a square with a little bit, couple of mountains in it. I can go ahead and hit insert image. And I have that option to pull from uh, a URL, my drive or upload something. I always recommend doing the one from your drive. And here's that one I just added. So I can select that and hit select. And there's that signature I just loaded in there. I can type anything I want in here as well. You can see in my signature, my actual one, I've got some extra text in there. I've got some hyperlinks in there. I'm not going to make that test one live, but I just wanted you to know how to get that image into your Google signature so you can actually use it because that's the next question I get a lot. The very important thing you need to do next is scroll all the way to the bottom and hit save changes. Otherwise it won't apply. And what will happen then once you've got that saved in there is you'll hit compose and your signature will automatically populate right inside that email for you. So I'm gonna stop sharing because you guys don't need to look at my email. There's <laughs> a lot of stuff in there. Um, any questions about how to get that email in there? Or excuse me, the signature in your email. Is that helpful to see that uploads feature? Okay. I never thought about putting it in my Google Drive. I've always just uploaded it manually, but keeping it in the Google Drive makes a lot yeah. of sense. I like doing the Google Drive because a lot of times when you have something housed on your computer and you go send your email to somebody else, it's hard for the other, like the recipient, sometimes depending on what platform they're on, whatever email they're using or whatever operating system they're using, sometimes the image doesn't come over well. Whereas if it's in your Google Drive, it's actually a link that it's embedding into your system and it's a, a shared link. So anybody anywhere that has access to the internet has access to that image. Whereas the upload, when you manually upload it, sometimes it just doesn't work right. And you get that little icon that looks like a, a placeholder for a photo. So doing that upload to the Google Drive will help prevent that from happening. Um, and then my extra pro tip for you is you, you probably notice I have a lot of stuff under my uh, my image, that's my email signature. And I do that because just in case somebody's email doesn't load the image, they'll still have the important information like phone number, email, stuff like that. Obviously they have my email because I emailed them, but you never know, maybe they want to write it down and give it to somebody. Um, and then I like putting those links in there too for uh, popular questions. So you guys could do the same thing with real estate, you know, FAQs for buyers or sellers, something like that, a link to your app, that type of stuff. We could do a whole class just on email signatures. <laughs> Cherie's laughing at me. All right. Well, with that, we are right at 11 o'clock. So I would, I'm going to ask one more time if anybody had any questions, your quiet group today about the branding. I had one final question. Okay. Um, yeah. it, the content was great, but not what I expected. I was actually thinking it was going to be more about making sure things do match. And so um, do you have any other tip other than like you had the one red line house, but if we have logos that we want to match or marketing that we do want to match, how do we kind of get it so that it's sized correctly and it's matching across platforms? That's kind of a bigger question that you can probably answer in 30 seconds, but. Well, so I would like, if you're using the command, I would definitely make sure you're uploading all of those assets into the, the asset section. That way you have the same logo that's matching across the board. Um, I do have a class on my channel that's about general branding, um, not necessarily in command, just how to brand yourself online. Let me see if I can pull that up for you real quick. How fast I can type. I would love that. that could be helpful. Um, and then I have a little playlist that's just about social media strategies. I think it's in there. Give me one second. There we go. So I've got staying consistent out here, how to build your brand. It's just a little 10 minute video, but I'll put that link in the chat for you. Okay, thank you. How do we find you? Like just randomly see you every once in a while come up on my Facebook and I don't even know how I connected with you. So I don't know how to connect back with you unless you randomly come up. All right, give me one second here. I'm just gonna end the class recording.